hospital. So he may be able to finally leave the hospital also. So he's been doing just improving and improving this uh, this week and a little last week. So uh, so just praise Jesus Christ, you know, that, that uh, my friend's improving. So we're, I'm just very thankful. And thank you all for all your prayers. Praise God. Praise God. Well, we love you, Zisla, and um, we love Israel, and we're believing God for the complete work. And uh, let's just give God some praise. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we praise you for what you're doing in uh, Israel's life, and we ask that you continue to perfection, that which you have begun, perfect it, Lord. And we, we put our trust in you, and we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Well, thank God. Amen. Thank God for all Amen. of you. Amen. And we're up now and I'm on my backup computer. So we expect this to go well. God bless you all. Tonight we're looking at lesson number six. We're halfway through the course, everybody. Yes. We're halfway there. Halfway. Yay. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God a shout yes. praise. Praise, Thank you, Jesus. praise. Hallelujah. Jackie, are you on with me? Yes, I'm on. I had to get off my computers that did some strange things. So I said, let me call the phone number. So I, that's what I did. I called. Okay, 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 fine. So everybody's all right. You can hear me well? Yes. yes. Okay, yep. praise God, praise God. I want to thank you all for what you're doing, for your homework assignments and and everybody's right on schedule we're starting to get in um the rest of lesson five and some of you have already done lesson six good 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 so i need to give you more homework you've got you've got all this free time on your hand no, no we're not going to mess with that we're not going to mess with that jeep said no. <laughs> jeep said no way no way well, praise God. Lesson number six. And when we finish this lesson tonight, we are halfway through the course. And then uh, next week, I will be sending you out, or maybe this later this week, I'm going to send you out a document. And it includes the two new courses we're adding next semester. So for next semester, which begins on June 2nd and ends on August 31, we will be adding two new courses, and um, one is called Gifted to Succeed, in which you'll have an idea of a course that would be a blessing to you to help you to zoom in on your area of expertise. Gifted to Succeed. I've taken that course. It is a wonderful course, a marvelous course. And then we will add another course, which will be exciting also, and it's called um Introduction to the Prophetic. This book will prepare us for uh, Paul Begley's course. And then uh, the, the course that Pastor Paul is writing. I don't need this speaker, do I? Okay. This will prepare us for the course that Pastor Paul is writing. And Pastor Paul's excited about that. We're excited. And so... Next week or later this week, look for an email from me that includes the new courses for next semester and then the courses we're offering in the fall semester, which begins in October. Then let me add this. By the end of the fall semester, we will have five courses in the Paul Begley School of Prophecy. And by that time, most of you will have uh, completed those five courses, but when here's here's the here's the blessing when you if you decide to go on when you complete those five courses, you will qualify. You'll be eligible. You will receive an associate degree in prophecy, an associate degree in prophecy from the Paul Bagley School of Prophecy with the completion of those five courses. I will outline it. It's the documents are already. And I will send it to you later this week or early next week. Look it over. Pray about it. Um, the, the courses are flowing. By this time next year, we expect to have, by this time next year in the Paul Baker School of Prophecy, we will have our 
bachelor's degree program in place. And many of you will be well on your way to a bachelor's degree in the Paul Bagley School of Prophecy. By this time next year, we'll be well on our way to the in the accreditation process. So we're moving along. We thank God for the school, uh, the school that is changing people's lives. And so we give God the praise and we thank you for for your courage and your boldness. You are the foundational class. You're the pioneers. You are the class that has pioneered the Paul Bagley School of Prophecy. And uh, I'm, I'm just excited uh, growing with you in this new school. And so uh, I'm believing God that all of you are doing well. We're praying for you and your families. Uh, Jackie and I, we love hearing from you and communicating with you. And we're excited about your growth and how God is blessing you. So tonight, let's take an overview of our lesson for tonight. Lesson number six, the major prophets, the major prophets. By now, you Before, already have. Well, let's Pastor Carter. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for our students for waiting tonight, waiting patiently as you uh, selected the computer you wanted to use tonight. And um, we just praise you and honor you. Father, reach out your hand and touch each one and their families. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Bless Paul and Heidi. Strengthen them and keep them. We thank you for the mighty works that are being done in this ministry. And we praise you and honor you. Now bless us tonight in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge your presence. And we cannot do anything without you. We give you the praise. You already have now 22 books of the Bible that we have studied 22 books of the bible now i just want to know is there a brave student out there a brave student out there who who can without looking without looking at your book or any bible or any piece of literature can you re recite the 22 books that we have studied already who will volunteer I can okay. do it, Pastor Carter. Lisa says she'll do it next week. Do it next week. Jeep, okay, let's see. Let me see. I need my power on. Okay. Jeep, you want to try it? I'm going to try it. Good. Good. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st, 2nd, Samuel, first Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Chronicles. So, go ahead. You're Samuel. right. You're right, Samuel. First, second Samuel, first, second Kings, first, second Chronicles. Mm -hmm. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. Um, then it's um, poetry, poetry, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Go ahead, give you a big hand, everybody. All right, that's wonderful. That's great job. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You have them. You you nailed them. You nailed them. Okay. And uh, before long, she'll have the thirty-nine books under her belt, and so will you. And then we look at the New Testament. There's a there's a a beautiful process in learning the books of the Bible, and once you learn them, that is a major accomplishment. Praise God. Does anyone have any questions before we go on? I want to welcome uh, Pastor Marcus with us and our, who will be teaching next year in the, in the uh, Communion with God Court next semester. Marcus, God bless you and your family, man. Okay, any questions? Okay, if no, there are no questions, then your assignment, let's look at your assignment for this week. These are the questions we ask you to uh, send in. Number one, right from memory, Isaiah 40, 31. That's one of our favorite scriptures. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and uh, not faint. That's um, write it out from memory. If you don't have it memorized, write it out anyhow. 
and then journal journal what this voice what this verse means to you ask god god what do you uh, what do you want to say to me about isaiah 40 31 and then let the lord speak to you in a wonderful way number two Describe how you see America's blessings and curses as the result of Deuteronomy 28. This is the chapter on blessings and curses. And so relate that to America. What do you see uh, uh, with America concerning the blessings and curses? Number three, describe the events that were taking place in Israel and Judah at the time Isaiah was prophesying. Ladies and gentlemen, as you look at Isaiah, and these eighth century prophets, uh, Hosea and many others, the situations they were facing are quite similar to the situations that we're facing in our nation today, in our world today. I mean, the kind of corruption, the spiritual uh, uh, infidelity and the corruption going on in Judah and Israel, these same things are happening today. So describe um, the events that were taking place. Number four, describe the events that were taking place during the time that God called Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a sixth, a seventh century, uh, roughly sixth to seventh century um, prophet, a hundred years after Isaiah. So describe that. And um, number five, describe Jeremiah's call. Uh, this was an awesome call. And uh, he reminds me of so many of us when God calls us, when God puts a, a burden on us. We say, but God, but God, can't you choose somebody else? But God, I'll, I just want to go to church. I want to just come online and, and listen to Pastor Paul. And and, and, and I, I like Dr. Carter's courses, but Lord, you mean you want me to do something? And then people get scared. But when God calls you, it means he has chosen you. He's got a great work for you. So just trust him. He will He will guide you. Don't be afraid. Uh, just uh, trust him. See, we can do nothing without the Holy Spirit. And when God calls you, he equips you. He or, He's already there where he wants you to be. And as you trust him, oh, sure, you're going to have opposition, but trust him with all your heart. And he guarantees you the victory. In fact, the, the end of the book, when you read the end of the book, it lets us know that we win. So you're on the winning side. Number six, Hebrews 10, 26 to 27 tells us if we continue sinning willfully after we know the truth testifying just terrifying terrifying judgment will come upon us from the lord we are if we know that we're sinning we need to repent that's everyone no matter no matter who who we are if we know we're sinning we need to repent don't just confess it get out of it turn from it um, there's no 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 grace and mercy if we continue in sin. You might want to look at Romans six, chapter one, uh, chapter six, one and two. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin continue any longer in it? So anyone who knows they're in sin and continues in it, there's no grace and mercy. God can cut us off. God says, How long will I strive? with that with with this this generation so repent and trust the holy spirit god is powerful enough to deliver us from any sin and just trust him with all your heart then in in our homework list five ways god may use as judgment against us if we go on sinning willfully so your textbooks gives you several examples and um just describe them then uh, your eighth question, describe the call of Ezekiel and the circumstances of his call. Then the dream that God gave Daniel, God gave Nebuchadnezzar and the interpretation Daniel gave and uh, a description of Daniel chapter 10. So you've got a very exciting lesson due for this, this next week. I hope you have fun uh, researching and and doing this, and um, you'll find the answer in the study of the major prophets. Okay, so tonight we're, we want to look at the major prophets, five prophets. Actually, there are five books, but four prophets, because one book is written by Jeremiah, 
and another book is written by Jeremiah. So there are four prophets, five books. We're looking at Isaiah, Jeremiah, then Jeremiah's book, Lamentations, and then Ezekiel and Daniel. A lot of material to cover, so let's uh, see what we can do with this. First of all, these prophets are called major prophets. Major in, in the fact that they are not any greater than the uh, other 12. Is there reverberation on, on anybody's? Uh, how's this for sound? Jackie, can you hear me? Yes, it's wonderful. Okay. Very clear. Okay, fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, the major prophets, the term major refers to the amount of prophecy, the length of their prophecy. When you compare Isaiah with Habakkuk, or if you compare Jeremiah with Zephaniah, Jeremiah's prophecy is much more, uh, much more volume, much more content than what Zephaniah did or Haggai. And so the major prophets, we're looking at the length of their prophecy or the volume of their books, um, the volume of what they had to say. But they are not in any way greater than any of the other prophets. There are no greater <coughs> uh, uh, prophets. Jesus said John the Baptist was greater than all of them. But in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of God, uh, there's no great one and a small one. We're all equal in God's sight. So we thank God. Um, next week, we'll be looking at the minor prophets, the 12 minor prophets. We'll be looking at Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we will be finished with the Old Testament. Praise God. Let's take a look at what prophecy means. Um, we have a lot of prophets out there today. A lot of, uh, and, 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 and many of you are going to be speaking prophecy if you're not already doing so. And so let's get a simple definition of prophecy. We think we have one <coughs> here in this course. And it's, it's all about when God speaks to a person, what you relate to others. A, a prophet hears God's voice or God speaks to that person and that person relates information to others. That's what prophecy is all about. Now, when you take the course introduction to the prophetic, you're going to learn so much about prophecy. I mean, this book is this new course that we offer next month is so exciting. I recommend that all of you take it. Uh, it's and it will be a great introduction to Paul Begley's prophecy course, which will begin in October. <clears throat> In order to understand the office and role of a prophet, look at 1 Samuel 9, 9. And that says, before time in Israel, when a man met, went to inquire of God, thus he spake, come and let us go to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. So the word prophet, you can break it down into its prefix and uh, suffix. Uh, the prefix pro means in place of, the suffix fet as compared to the Greek word hemi, uh, which means, and we put it all together and we get one who speaks in place of another. So God, <clears throat> God has used us or will use us all as prophets and um um, so Joel, Joel, the prophet Joel described what God is going to do and God is doing it. Joel said in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall dream dreams. Your, your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And upon your handmaidens and your servants, I will pour out my spirit upon them. <clears throat> So God today will use children, boys and girls as prophets, uh, men and women, old men, old women, young men, young women, the body of Christ, the body of Christ can all be prophets because God wants all of us 
to prophesy. Well, what is prophesying? Prophesying is hearing something from the Lord and then sharing it with others. The problem is many of us hear from God. We may not know how to share it with others or it may not be the right timing. You can't just blurt out to something to someone what you heard from the Lord last night. God has his timing. So timing is important. When God speaks a word to you, then you, you have to ask him about that word. God, who do you want me to say this to? And when do you want me to say this? And so because many people are not taught properly in the church, <clears throat> some churches are full of confusion. Everybody has a prophecy and, and, uh, and, and, and you get all this religion, religious stuff. Uh, and you get someone standing up while the preacher's trying to preach. You can't prophesy over the preacher. No one is supposed to override the preacher during a service. So there's confusion in a lot of churches because people have not been taught properly. If I'm preaching and someone thus says, stands up, thus saith the Lord, I am the Lord thy God, I'm the midst of thee. As a pastor, you know what I'm going to do? Gee, I'm going to say, sit down. I'm going to tell that person to sit down because if if I'm preaching or if you're preaching, then all attention is on what you have to say. If anyone wants to come with a word of prophecy or a tongue or anything else, then they have to do it decently and in order. No one overrides the pastor or the teacher or the apostle or the one God has anointed and appointed to teach his people. So what we have, and I've experienced this uh, in my years in the ministry, someone will, will jump up while I'm in the middle of my sermon and they have a, I have a word for the Lord. You cannot interrupt the flow of the Holy Spirit. You may have a word from God, but you need to wait on God's timing. And if you're out of order, God will rebuke you. So because there's not been adequate training and teaching in the church, many churches are, are, are seabeds for confusion. Uh, I've, I've had experiences where I've been preaching and someone uh, in the audience uh, stands up and starts speaking in tongues in the audience. You know what I do? I tell them, sit down, be quiet. And, th and if they override me, I ask the ushers to remove them, remove them from the place because they're out of order. God is not a God of confusion. If you've got a tongue, if you've got a word, then you must uh, uh, do it decently and in order. And so pastors, because many pastors don't know how to handle this, they don't know how to handle, they don't, they, many of them are ignorant of prophecy, many of ignorant of tongues. And so they allow anyone to stand up and say whatever they want. And then there's confusion. No, but our God is decent and he's orderly. And so we're going to learn uh, much more about prophecy in the course introduction to the prophetic. Okay, the qualifications of a prophet. The test of a prophet may be found in Deuteronomy 18.22. I'm on page 124 of your workbook. The test of a prophet, Deuteronomy 18.22. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a timing. There's a timing. We get all kinds of prophecy. We watch TV. We watch our, 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 our TBN network and, and get all kinds of prophecy. But prophets have to be careful that they're speaking the word of God, speaking according to God's timing. And we are not to do anything to cause confusion. And if we cause confusion, we need to go back to the church or to the audience and repent. Confess that confusion and repent. And if you have missed it, if you're a prophet, you've got a prophetic calling and you've missed God and you gave an, an error, you need to go back and repent. I've had to do that as a pastor. I've had to go back to, a con to congregations and repent. I've had to call pastors and ask them uh, uh, because the things I gave them were untimely, not uh, God's timing. And, and so because you hear word from the Lord, because you have an ear for God, because you know how to hear from God doesn't mean you run with everything you hear from God. You, we've got to be led by the Spirit of God. The scripture says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, 
They are the sons and the daughters of God. So our God is not a God of confusion. Let's look at Isaiah, um, written somewhere between 700 and 690 BC. His name means Yahweh is salvation. And let's clear this up. Because he, his, his prophecy covers so many years, the liberal Bible scholars try to say where there was a first Isaiah and a second Isaiah and a third Isaiah. Ladies and gentlemen, I went to seminary during the time of that madness when they're teaching about a first Isaiah, a second Isaiah, and a third Isaiah. There was so much confusion. And I said, look, Isaiah was Isaiah. There was one Isaiah and God allowed, allowed him to look and see, but they hated my guts when I criticized them. But there was no first Isaiah or second Isaiah or third Isaiah. One Isaiah. He said, in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah 6.1, he said, in the year that my cousin Uzziah, the king, died, I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. That's where Isaiah was called. Read about his calling, that sixth chapter. That was an awesome experience. Uh, an angel flew and, and, and brought a coal off the altar and touched his mouth and, 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 and let him know you're no longer of unclean lips. God has a, a, a purpose for us. And ladies and gentlemen, when God calls you, it doesn't matter what your background was or what's in your background. When God calls you and sanctifies you, saves you, sanctifies you, set, sets you apart and gives you a commission, ladies and gentlemen, it does not matter what people think about you or what's in your past. If you have repented and God has a calling on you, you go for it. I say go for it. Just go on out there. Go for it. Go for it. Oh, oh They're going to hate you. They're going to throw stones at you and all that, but that's all right. The Holy Ghost will protect you. Just learn how to go with the flow. Remember the scripture says, greater is he in me than he that's in the world. God's got you. He's got you covered. And he will protect you. He will guide you. So as we're learning, as we're learning how to commune with God, and we picked that up in our first course, learning how to commune with God, how to listen for his voice and how to trust him. And now as we go daily, ladies and gentlemen, have a daily walk with the Lord. Spend time with him every day. Don't let a, go, a day go by where you do not talk with the Lord and learn his voice. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And because we spend much time with him, we're learning his voice and he's learning our voice and he's trusting us more and more. And so all of this, ladies and gentlemen, is walking by faith and not by sight. And we get brilliant examples, brilliant examples in Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel, and the other prophets of people walking by faith. Whatever God told them, when God said go, they went. When God said blow, they blew it. They, they, they spoke it. So we just thank God. We thank God. So in the 8th century BC, um, get a description of the times of King Uzziah. Um, if any portion of the Bible describes uh, America in 2018 and the world in 2018, what you see in the world in 2018, that this is the what the times look like when Isaiah was called to the ministry. Political corruption, po uh, spiritual corruption, uh, uh, God's people were, were, were backslidden. And, and they loved it. They loved their backsliding. Um, everything, corruption all over the place. And God spoke to Isaiah. Then later he called Jeremiah. And God's whole purpose is to tell his people, I love you. I don't want to destroy you. Return to me. Return to me. God raised up so many prophets telling the people, return to me. Stop your sin. Stop your backsliding. Turn to me. And he's saying the same thing today, ladies and gentlemen. He's saying the same thing today. The message has not changed. Turn to me. Return to me, and I will not destroy you. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if, if people would just look at the history, the biblical history, and see how God had to destroy nations because of their disobedience, 
He has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So when God puts on your heart, as he put on the heart of Isaiah and Jeremiah and the prophets, and, and he says, take this word to, to uh, this church or take this word here or call this person or, or write this word or as our, our friend Sharon Hudson does, sing a song, create a song and send it to somebody. When God gives you a word, be obedient to him. And uh, the thing is, people say, but, uh, you know, they're going to attack me. Well, you, yes, you're going to be attacked. Um, if any person will live godly, they must suffer persecution. Look what they did to Jesus. But the end of the book says we win, ladies and gentlemen. We win. So be faithful to God. And here's another thing. God will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will not leave you alone. And so we're not going to spend a whole lot of time with Isaiah, a very vivid, vivid call. Read that sixth chapter and, and, and internalize the call of Isaiah. And then I'll look at the scriptures. But here is the, the, the prophet who's called the Messianic prophet. He uh, prophesied the Messiah. He prophesied a virgin giving birth and uh, told us so much, so much about Jesus' first coming and his second coming. What a great and mighty prophet. And then our scripture to remember is that 40th chapter and the 31st verse. I've got to go back to it so many, many times. They that wait upon the Lord. Have you ever uh, uh, depleted the energy in your barrel? I mean, all the energy ran out. Somebody, you ever been in a place where it seems like they pulled the plug on you? Well, the scripture says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And hey, Bryce Baggett, even the youths shall faint. The young men shall faint. But they that wait upon the Lord, hallelujah, praise God. And, 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 and when we wait on the Lord, no matter what's happening, when we wait on the Lord, he renews our strength. What a mighty God we serve. So let's uh, go next to Jeremiah. Um, it's, it's, it's very difficult to teach on these prophets, these major prophets, because they had they offer us so much. But you read the book, read the textbook, and um, uh, hit me up with an email or call me for any questions you may have. But enjoy studying these prophets. Jeremiah. Jeremiah was like a teenager. Here's about the guess is about he was about 17. About 17. Let's try to eliminate that echo. Sandra Lee has an echo up in Canada. Jeremiah was about 17 when he was called. And he said, oh, oh God, but I'm but a, I'm but a child. And the Lord said, no, you're not a child. And uh, he called Jeremiah and told him what his ministry would be. And he even told Jeremiah, they will hate you. Can you imagine, ladies and gentlemen, you're in ministry for 40 years and you know for 40 years people are going to hate on you? Well, that's how it was with Jeremiah. Not only did they hate him, they tried to kill him. The leaders tried to uh, assassinate him. Um, Jeremiah's life was not an easy life, but he knew what God had called him to do, and God called him and kept him. And even at the end, uh, we don't know how he died, but we know he died in Egypt, where the a remnant of, of Jews in Israel uh, said, decided they were going to go into Egypt, despite God's uh, uh, warning to them. And they forced Jeremiah to go with them into Egypt. And we believe he died there. But here's a prophet uh, called at a very young age and, and prophesied for many years and, and uh, was steadfast, unmovable, even to the point of where they tried to kill him and, and uh, threw him in a pit to die and drown. But Jeremiah remained faithful. Ladies and gentlemen, remain faithful to God. No matter what is going on in your life, God will deliver you. He will meet every need. We serve a mighty God. 
There is none other like him, and he's able. Greater is he in us than he that's in the world. So read about Jeremiah, and um, there are so many wonderful scriptures in, in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 33, 6 says, call unto me, I will answer you. I'll show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. So when you ask God, God, what is it you want to say to me? God will answer you and show you great and mighty things. And so here we find a young man who dedicated his life to the Lord and went through persecution. Then the next book in our five major prophets, this is actually the book, another book of Jeremiah. And it's called Lamentations, Lamentations, referring to the sufferings, the mournings of Jerusalem, the mournings, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G-S, the cryings. Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the man writing, and the book of Lamentations is Jeremiah's bird's eye view. He was an eyewitness of Nebuchadnezzar coming through Jerusalem and destroying Jerusalem. Jeremiah was there. He had tried to warn the people. God told him to tell the people to surrender to Nebuchadnezzar. If you surrender, I will spare you. But the people uh, accused Jeremiah of being a traitor and they tried to assassinate him. And many were destroyed because they did not obey the prophet of God. So here's Nebuchadnezzar with his wicked army overrunning Jerusalem. And Jeremiah the prophet writes, later on he writes what he experienced as he watched uh, thousands of people being killed and people being slaughtered and Jerusalem overrun. And I love that third chapter of Lamentations where Jeremiah says, it is because of your mercies, Lord, that we are not consumed. Your compassions they fail not. They are new every morning. Jeremiah witnessed the, the destruction of Jerusalem, but yet even in witnessing all of that destruction, he testified, God, it is because of your mercies that we are not consumed. Your compassions, they fail not. They are new every morning. What a great book. What a great book and eyewitness account of the destruction of Israel. The Bible serves as a guide to us also. I mean, as you, we read the Bible, I, I can't understand how anybody can continue to live in sin in this day and age knowing what the Bible says about sin. God must judge sin. Yet, ladies and gentlemen, there are still so many people who do not believe it. They think we're religious kooks. But we've got to prophesy, we've got to preach, we've got to show love, we've got to be patient, we've got to walk in love, because the end time is upon us, ladies and gentlemen, and, and uh, Jesus can come back any day now. And if Jesus comes back with the world and the situation it's in, multitudes, millions of people will be destroyed. And the sad thing is, there'll be millions of people who go to church every Sunday. They go to church every Sunday. They know how to do church, but they don't know how to do Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, God is calling a holy people, a people who will sell out to him. So we've got to share them with them, the love of Jesus Christ, not only in this nation, but in every nation. God wants people to be saved. He does not want to destroy them. Then we go to the book of Ezekiel and we're kind of running through these. I'm sorry again that I came on late. Uh, and I'll just give you a little taste of Ezekiel and a little taste of Daniel. Ezekiel uh, was a young man from the royal family. He was trained to be a priest and he was carried away in the second wave of captivity. He wanted to be a priest in Jerusalem. He was studying for the priesthood, but he was carried away to Babylon. And it's while he was on the banks of the river in Babylon, that God spoke to him and called him. God called Ezekiel and, and told him to preach to the captives. So his ministry was to preach to the captives. Ladies and gentlemen, in whatever situation you're in, God will have you ministering to people. And uh, 
if if destruction comes upon this nation, God will have people ministering to the people. God wants to save people, no matter what their situations are. And so Ezekiel was very faithful. Um, he was friends with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He was a contemporary of them, a contemporary of Daniel, and um, a very, very faithful man. Here's something I, I, I really admire about Ezekiel. And just to show you something about his character and how serious God's calling was upon his life. God spoke to Ezekiel on one occasion and said, your wife is going to die tonight, but you cannot mourn her. So get your shoes on and go out and prophesy to the people. His wife died that night of a stroke. Mrs. Ezekiel died of a stroke, and Ezekiel could not even bury his own wife, could not mourn for his own wife. That's how serious it was with God trying to get Israel to repent of their sins. So when we look at these prophets, we look at men and women who had very serious issues in their lives, and, and many were persecuted, many were killed, they were destroyed. When you go back to Isaiah, he did not die a, a natural death. The people there hated him so much because he spoke for God. They hollowed, they took a tree trunk and hollowed it out, stuffed Isaiah in that tree trunk and sawed that tree trunk into two parts, meaning they cut the prophet into two pieces. And that's verified by the book of Hebrews. So we're looking at uh, servants of the Lord who were faithful to the Lord and who did not give up. And Ezekiel saw the kingdom age. He saw the, 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 the advance of Jesus Christ. He did not see the church age, but he saw the kingdom age, the first advent of Christ and the second advent of Jesus Christ. So we're, we're very thankful. Um, those of you who follow our Sunday morning online church, in the last two Sundays I've been preaching from Ezekiel, and about the valley of dry bones and relating relating the valley of dry bones to the church we're like dry bones scattered all over the place so if you uh get that video i sent uh, a message out over the weekend look at that video and look at how god wants to raise up the church god wants to raise up an army of prophets i'm praying and i ask that you'll join me in praying that god will raise up an army of prophets. I'm believing that God will raise up through this Paul Begley School of Prophecy an army of prophets who will hear from the Lord and who will speak to the people about what thus saith the Lord. Praise God. Then we go to the book of Daniel. Daniel was another awesome brother, an awesome brother. Um, he was one of the captives. As a young man, he was captured, captured along with his friends uh, who were renamed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And because they refused to uh, enjoy the wealth and the prosperity of Babylon, they were picked out and put in school because they were, they were sharp. They were highly intelligent, uh, healthy, and good looking. And, and, the, and so they all became eunuchs. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have time to go into the whole concept of being a eunuch but they were castrated so that they would have no uh, involvement uh, sexually with the women. And so, and a eunuch does not have any connotation of, of being gay. They were neutered, just like a, an animal is neutered. They were neutered so that the king could trust them with his uh, wives and with his concubines and with his kingdom. And so these men, even though uh, the evidence is that they were, uh, uh, castrated and made to be eunuchs. They are faithful servants of the Lord. Nothing gay, nothing funny about them. They were faithful servants of the Lord. And Daniel was one of these. And we see Daniel uh, serving the Lord in Babylon. And uh, Daniel being very, very, very faithful to the Lord. God had him there at the time when Nebuchadnezzar had some dreams. And how Daniel interpreted those dreams. Read the fourth chapter of Daniel and look at Nebuchadnezzar, the 
most powerful ruler on the face of the earth. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and he got caught up in pride and he thought he would he was all powerful and God cut him down. And history records uh, that what the Bible says was true. Nebuchadnezzar went crazy, ladies and gentlemen, went out of his mind. And for seven years, he crawled on all fours like an animal in the forest, eating gra uh, grass and, and, and leaves and, and crawling on all fours for seven years. He was out of his mind, but he still held on to his kingdom. They had regents. They had others serving as leaders while the king was running around the forest for seven years uh, as a crazy wild man. But the scripture says in Daniel chapter four, um, when when Nebuchadnezzar repented, he said, he said, my mind returned to me and, and the claws on my fingers and toes are, were restored to nails, toenails and fingernails. And the, the fur on my body returned to hair. And he said, I stood upright. And I lifted up my hands to the most high God and I declared that the God of Daniel is the God of the whole earth. And history, history records that after that confession, when Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, the, the vicious king who destroyed Israel, when Nebuchadnezzar made that confession, God gave him one more year. And what Nebuchadnezzar did for the rest of that year was to send out decrees to every nation in the world that God is God. There is no other God but him. He was a witness. I believe I believe as, as vicious as Nebuchadnezzar was in his lifetime, God gave him time and I believe he got saved. He became a powerful witness for the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar even became a prophet. He heard from God and he began prophesying about the Lord. I believe we'll see him in heaven. God is, we serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. No matter what a person has done, God is willing to forgive. God is willing to change. God is willing to raise people up. And so we get all of this by studying the prophets. We um, take a look at the prophecies. Okay, I don't have time to go into Daniel's 70 weeks and, and this sort of thing. Um, but we're living in the last days and Daniel's prophecies are being fulfilled. Daniel's prophecies, what Daniel saw, this is being fulfilled. That is why all eyes are on Jerusalem. All eyes are on Jerusalem. Um, when President Trump, um, no matter what you think about President Trump, when he declared that the U.S. Embassy would be moved to Jerusalem and, and he supports Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, ladies and gentlemen, what he did was something prophetic, was something prophetic. He he did something prophetic. And ladies and gentlemen, all eyes are on Jerusalem. We believe, many people believe God is going to do something mighty, mighty this year. Next month, next month marks the 70th year of the restoration of Israel as a nation. The 70th year, Daniel said, Daniel said in his prophecy, God said, I will gather my people and in the 70th year, I will visit them. Ladies and gentlemen, God regathered, this is awesome. God regathered Israel in 1948. I was six years old when Israel was restored as a nation. And uh, 70 years later, 70 years later, God said, I will revisit, I will visit my people in the 70th year. This is the year all Israel is excited because they believe God is going to visit with a mighty visitation. It's going to have a, a mighty repercussions for the church. God is about to do something. So, ladies and gentlemen, expect the Lord to move mightily. Uh, keep your eye on world events. But most of all, keep your eyes on the Lord. Praise God. Well, that covers our five major prophets. And um, whew, we did it in 45 minutes, less than 45 minutes. Okay, so we're going to ask you if you want to unmute your phones, any questions you may have, any comments, and um, 
we we'll, we'll go from there. Just feel free to unmute your phone, ask any questions. Anybody? I can't hear anyone. I have a question. Yes. This is Jackie. I was wondering if you know when the temple will be rebuilt. The third temple. Hey, Jackie. If, if yes. I knew that, I'd have my own talk show, wouldn't I? You would. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie. Jackie. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know. I don't have a clue. I don't have a clue. Okay. And I ain't going to step out there, Jackie. No, no way. No, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to know if you had any personal comments on it. My only comment is with, with, with seeing Jerusalem reestablished as the capital of Israel, and Russia hates mm -hmm. it, and the Arab nations hate it, but our president had the boldness to restore it. In fact, I think they named a street in Israel Trump Avenue because he had the boldness out of all the American presidents in recent time to, to initiate the reinstitution of Jerusalem as God's holy city and God's capital. So that's a sign, Jackie. That's a sign. Okay. Um, the, the reestablishment of Jew, Jerusalem, and they say, they say that uh, things are being put into place for uh, the, the Israelites to uh, recapture the, the Temple Mount. So, but to answer your question, I don't okay. know. Okay. Hey, Dr. Carter. Bryce? Yes, sir. Did you want to say, how are you doing, man? I'm doing good. Honestly, I believe the Temple will be built within my lifetime. Praise God. Praise God. Hey, I, I, I believe I believe that, too. You're young and uh, you're young. What are you, 18 now? Yes, sir. I believe I believe you'll see it. I believe you'll you'll see uh, things that uh, uh, us old guys, we, we won't we may we not may not be able to see those things. And um, but I, I believe you're going to see things that that these prophets talked about. And so you be faithful to God and, and teach people, man. Teach people. Teach people. What yes, God shows you, you God share with them. Been amazing. Yes, yes. God bless you. God bless you, Bryce. We love you, man. Love y'all too. Please be safe. Praise God. Anyone else want to share? Dr. Carter. Hey, hello. This is Brian. Brian, how are you doing, man? Good. I'm good. How are you doing? Doing fine. Praise God. I guess my question is, well, it's sort of a question. I believe since I've had um, the Spirit outpoured upon me two or three main, two or three big times in my life where a lot of miracles happen, is, 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 it, is it safe to assume that God will keep on doing that during my lifetime? I would, if I were you and you, you've seen miracles and God spoken to you. You've got a relationship with him. Okay. Expect more, expect more. I ought to be saying, God, give me more, give me more, give me more. Not only me, but give miracles to others. Yes. I would expect that that you're walking with him. Keep on walking, but don't turn from him. Right. You got to keep on that path. Yes. Jesus, and, Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Yes. He is the only way. He is the only way. And in so, everything you do and all that he does for you, give him the praise. Right. Is it it's not about ourselves, it's about him. Yes. Lisa Cantrell Smith says, keep your river of life flowing. Let that river continue to flow. Thanks, Lisa. Let that river flow. Yeah, amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Dr. Carter. Oh, God bless you. Anyone else want to share? Lisa, so glad to see you on tonight, Lisa. Praise God. Okay. Sandra Lee, we hope uh, that your sound was okay there. And um, 
Next week, we'll be back on the regular system. I'll just take out the kinks out of that. Anyone else want to share? Okay, then let's get ready. Pastor Carter. Yes. Dean Carter, before we go, good evening, everybody. I just want to do a quick check to see if Sharon joined us. Linda, Barbara, or Ryan? Hey, Miss Jackie, it's Ryan. Hi, Ryan. You be safe. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, and what about Pam? I'm here. I've been here. Hey, Pam. Great. Thank you. Hey, Dr. Carter. You're welcome. Okay. Okay, Jackie. Okay. Hey, everybody. On behalf of Jackie and myself, we love you all, and we're very proud of the work you're doing. And uh, it's such a, a blessing to be able to teach you and, and, and to watch you grow. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Man, uh, I, I, I listened to what Bryce said and, and know that this torch, we're passing this torch to a a younger generation, and this, this flame is going to keep on burning until Jesus comes back. So God bless all of you. Hey, Matt, so good to see you, man. Hope you're not snowed in up in Pennsylvania. Uh, God bless everybody. Have a good night. Keep on praying for one another. And keep on walking in love. God bless you. Bless you. Good night.